Oh shit, it's Mind Pump time. Welcome to the best podcast you'll hear anywhere that combines fitness and entertainment. Hey, we got a giveaway for you. This is what we do, by the way. Every single episode we drop here on YouTube, we give away free stuff. Today, we're giving away MAPS Split. This is an advanced bodybuilding style workout program. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this podcast and let us know what you think about the episode. Bring up a topic, something that we talked about, uh, start a debate, whatever. If we pick your comment, you'll win free access to Map Split. You also have to turn on your notifications and subscribe to this channel. One more thing before we start the podcast. And by the way, this is a great podcast. Uh, we are running a sale. Maps Prime, Maps Prime Pro, and the Prime Bundle, all 50% off. Just go check them out. Head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Use the code June Prime with no space for that discount. All right, enjoy this podcast. I can talk about the mellow all day long because of the the results I've been feeling from that. I just mm -hmm. have you tried taking it during the day? I haven't done during the day. I have done like earlier in the evening, like on a weekend when I'm like I don't need to go to sleep. I just want to kind of chill. Totally works. Yeah. No, it's. I'm blown away by how it makes me sleep. I don't know if it's affecting you guys the same way, but this is like no bullshit, no commercial talk. Like it's literally, I drink it every, I, this is how serious I am about it. I, I bought outside of what we have here. Right. So I bought my own two boxes and I set up in my master bedroom. Um, I got those little, those little, the small water bottles cause they mix well. And that's, you just, that's all you need. Mm -hmm. And so I literally have like 60 water bottles on, on the dresser inside there. And then I have the whole setup. You have a Ned mellow station. I do. Yeah. <laughs> we have a mellow station. It's, no. it's right next to the uh, couch. Uh, so before we put the kids to sleep and then we spend time together, just chilling, like we'll both take a mellow and it's just been game changing. I'm that I'm that serious about it. Like no, I'll take I'll take a picture yeah. of the, what my setup on it. No, it's legit. It's just yeah. like we must be deficient. You know, like that, that's, that's like the, the bottom line. That's for me. the only. I've thing been telling makes... you guys for years. You guys are deficient. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Try this if you guys want to have some fun. I see you drinking uh, black cold brew mm -hmm. nitro coffee. Yeah, yeah. That's have it. My other favorite. Have it with some with some coffee. Well, oh, now that's with coffee. Like, oh, don't mix it in the coffee. No, I know. Of course, it so tastes terrible. have it first. Then drink a strong cup of coffee, mm. and, it's, and it'll be like just being normal. No, 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 yeah. no. It doesn't work like that. No, it, it's a, it's, and of course, take your theanine. It's really nice. It is. I kind of want to do that right now. I mean, though. I've, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a try. I mean, I definitely tried your theanine uh, addition to the coffee, and that was a, you know, a great way to extend that caffeine. It makes buzz. it last longer. And it's, it's not too high. Smooth. It's sharp. It's a wonderful combination. Uh, I will try that. I wouldn't that, have thought that. actually that. makes me want to try it. Yeah. Wait, Doug, are you getting up to go get me one? Is that what you're doing? I know. Oh, hell oh, yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah, good. We're going to mix it in. You can't no, mix just, it in yeah, just give me some water. and uh, you going to dry scoop it? I heard that no, that kills people. Yeah, I don't want to dry scoop it. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the dry scooping is the problem. You had the Tide Pods. Rest in peace, Mind yeah. Pump Adam. Did you guys know that today is the anniversary, as of the recording of the show, right? We release mm. the show later on, but uh, the, it's the it's the anniversary of the OJ chase on TV. Oh, it is? What year? What year? 1994. Wow. I, I'm almost positive. Let me look it up. 19, that was before high school why does that, for me? that does not seem like that long Am ago. I tripping? Am yeah. I tripping? Was it longer than that? No, it no. Was, that's That sounds right because now because I remember. Forever. 1994. Yeah. yeah. It was June 17th. Changed the association with white Broncos forever. Okay. So do you guys remember? I think almost everybody who was old enough to pay attention. Do you guys remember what you were doing when this happened? Yeah. I mean, we were all yeah, pretty yeah. young. We're like freshmen. To, uh, remember no, no, where I was, I was, but I definitely remember watching it at my friend's house. Yeah, I was seventh grade. Seventh grade. And it was at my house. We had this. Is, we had those. Uh, had a Magnavox TV, the 32 inch that's in the wood. Frame. Yeah, this is like oh, wow. remarkably descriptive. Big old. Well, I remember. I mean, tube one, right? Like those heavy ones. Yeah, it was. It sat on the floor and had the wood sides and everything like that. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. It weighed like nine hundred pounds. Yeah, for the a TVs 30, don't weigh nearly as much. Thirty-two inch TV. This is why we're so weak now. By yeah. the way, yeah. the TVs are light. <laughs> and then, yeah, then you're always the the friend that has to move your your friend from one stupid apartment to another, yeah. and then they have that like ridiculous TV. Yeah. We actually, my my, I think the last the, the the dying of that right. My buddy had the thirty inch, thirty six inch. I think is the biggest tube TVs ever mm -hmm. got, right? 
and he had one of those uh, super heavy. And he lived on the third floor, oh. <laughs> and he was just. I like, remember holding those with like the tips of my fingers. Yes. Yeah, because it just, wasn't like they had uh, handles. No, you, there was nowhere to grab it, and they were odd the way the weight was distributed. I feel like they made them out of cast oh, iron. You yeah. know, I don't know. Like they were so heavy. Doug, it's like lead inside. Here's to there. the YouTube yeah. audience right here. Yeah. You guys can hey, show the see. color. Look that how nice this looks. Yes, is lavender. That's right my here. favorite flavor too. Lavender. Yeah. Actually, I like, I like the regular. You no like regular, un, the unflavored. Oh, I, I like no, the flavored. I like, I like unflavored is yeah. and actually tastes good. So itself. let me know how chill I am by the end of this podcast. Yeah, yeah. watch what happens, everybody. By the end of the podcast, you should be saying smart stuff. Yeah. Finally, so uh, I don't think it's a cognitive we'll boost, is it? Yeah. Well, ca caffeine plus that. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, you'll have some increased verbal fluency mm, for sure. Ooh. So, um, did you guys know that the OJ Chase, right? That we're this is the anniversary of. Yeah. It's the most in history. What, t watched televised event ever still to this day uh, more so than like the moon anything landing 95 no. million people watch that e watch Are every minute of that yes and to I, this, did, I did not know that till this day well, it's the most watched wasn't after that was after that cops the show or was cops before that because i remember that was like huge uh oh, cops, cops, cops is before, before that, that. Cops been is a long, okay. long time yeah yeah, yeah cops have been around yeah because people have been super fascinated with uh car chases and yeah. and you know like busting people so so oj not going to jail was pretty remarkable because uh i mean there's more to the case in this but let's just okay his ex like his wife was found murdered with her lover that she was cheating on oj with so they're both murdered right the cops go to oj and instead of being like what's going on he gets in his Bronco and, and, and takes off. It takes off. Yeah. yeah. And they Doesn't chase look him. guilty at all. Yeah. They for chase doing him. that. For miles, helicopters are filming this <laughs> and we're all glued to our TV. Like, what is going on right now? Yeah. OJ is on and the And he's land. a massive, like, star. I mean, he was, you know, just from his time in the NFL, but also, like, remember TV. Naked Gun? Yeah. And, uh, the, yeah. He was making his TV rounds. The most gangster move of all is writing a book. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I, I did well, it, well, yeah. If, if I did it, this is how I'd do it. Dude. Oh my god, <laughs> bro! Hey, do you remember his? Yeah. Uh, I actually, I've, that's been yeah. on my list to read for I have forever, and I've never, I have never. I don't want to give him money, I'd, yeah, because he gets money if you buy that shit. That's the uh, thing. So his obviously his lawyer, one of his lawyers was the uh, you know Kim Kardashian's dad. That's how they got famous and all that stuff, right? His yeah. OJ's he, he was good. They friends were with they the were family friends. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They were close family friends. But do you remember his other lawyer? What was his name Johnny is, Cochran? Is that Cochran? You, yeah? And he's like. If if the glove don't fit, you must, you must quit. quit. Yeah, because because he he was like like he couldn't put the glove on. But come on, he wasn't even trying, bro. Yeah, come I know, on, he dude. was even pulling it hard. I remember yeah, that was yeah. the a definitive part of the case where the jury is just like, oh, well, yeah, yeah. I guess if the glove doesn't, doesn't fit, fit, we must quit. <laughs> that must like, happen. I still understand. <laughs> what a crazy time that was. But I didn't know that it was the most. I looked this up yesterday. Actually, I didn't look it up. I saw an article. That's a fa like, that's a fascinating fact. Ninety five million Americans were glued to the television. Now, when you looked that up, did it give a list? Of like the top five or other ones that are close because no. I don't even know. I mean, there was literally an article. Be about interesting that. to speculate what you think are the most the most watched. Uh, and this ever. was yeah, obviously this was the United States. Uh, you know, obviously yeah, it was, yeah, it, it was an international like news. Not ninety. I don't think. In, I mean, it was, but I don't know if in nineteen. I just wonder if other countries were paying attention too. Yeah, I think they were. I think it was international. It was like a big deal. Huh. Yeah. Um. Our news. Our big news usually does make it. Uh, overseas. Well, especially if it's a celebrity, right? Mm -hmm. like, right. So I think that's what made sad too because he was a, a badass in the NFL. A oh, badass, yeah. dude. Yeah. Him, the orange juice. Wow. Tech Mobile. I mean, too. I the orange it, juice I express. Think, I don't think it changes that. I mean, he still is. A no, badass. yeah. It's, again, we, we, yeah, we can't. That's why you don't worship yeah. the, the You're athletes. Right. You're you know? right. You know, in bodybuilding, celebrities. You know, in bodybuilding, this is not that most people even know who I'm about to talk about, but there was a bodybuilder. That I was a big fan of, mainly because I heard about him in uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's Encyclopedia Bodybuilding. Which, by the way, I don't think you can see this on camera. My <laughs> original, I don't yeah. know if, Doug, you could somehow maybe take a picture of this so people can see it. Well, we'll when he does the big pan, I think you can see it in that. So yeah. the, my original Arnold Schwarzenegger Encyclopedia Bodybuilding is in here right now. And it's like wrapped in tape because I've read that thing yeah. 500 million times. Anyway, in Lots that- of blood, sweat, and semen on that in, <laughs> No, No semen is oh, in yeah. there. I never sweat. jerked yes. off. Okay, okay, no problem. Come on. Don't, I'm just still alive. Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Those I'm are, just saying. I don't know. It's it's pretty tarnished, dude. That's it, not you know, why there I was read a it. lot of uh, time spent with it. Yeah, I, no, that's not I don't know exactly I'm what with kind Justin. of time I think there was some, spent with it. some sticky pages. No, I thing. learned from the book. <laughs> Everybody, calm down. Back right, in those right. days, all I, I, it was the Sears catalog, the bra section. That's what I used. Anyway, okay. In that, 
there was a, the shoulder workout section, and he had a bodybuilder. Uh, by the it was a, it was an English bodybuilder from the UK, black guy, uh, Bertel Fox, and he was just this. He was oh, the, that's a cool name. He was a, a a mass monster of the era. Like he was just bigger than everybody else back then. And remember, this is back in the seventies and early eighties when they weren't using the crazy drugs that they were using now. And I was a huge fan of this guy, big old crazy looking delts and muscle. Anyway, this guy went to jail for murdering. His wife and someone else, like he shot them with a shotgun, whatever. He's in jail right now. Wow. From doing all that. So it's kind of like one of those, like you idolize someone, Mm -hmm. but you don't realize, especially when you're a kid, that just because they're good at one thing doesn't mean that they're a good person. Yeah, there's so many examples of that. Yeah, Yeah. obviously he was a a bad person. Hey, I started to watch your uh, Longmire show. Oh, you did? What'd you think? It's good. Yeah. Yeah, I really like it. So have you ever seen um, Justified? Oh yeah, I have. I love that show too. Okay, I was gonna yeah. say because it's it, 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 was, it reminds me of that. Yeah. yeah, it was recommended with that and another one that I really. Oh, and the uh, the one with Kevin Costner. I, I forget Yellowstone. Uh, Yellowstone. Yeah, both those are really good. So if you like Longmire, you'll really like those. Yeah, too. and it's got that kind of cowboy feel to it. But I just like that it's you know it's, kind of, it's like a rugged manly guy, but he's like he's got a good heart. Yeah, so yeah, it's like integrity, it, right? Yeah, you don't yeah. you don't see a lot of these characters anymore for what's, some reason. What's the song? What platform? It's on Netflix. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll check it out. You know yeah. what I did check out was uh, Sweet Tooth. Remember we talked about it last oh, time? Oh, I did too. Okay. Uh, I actually enjoyed it. Yeah. Right? How it many really? episodes in are you? I'm about three episodes in. So. It's actually interesting. Yeah. So the 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 trailer, it doesn't really kind of give you a yeah, breakdown of what's going didn't on. didn't sell me on it. It's actually pretty smart. It's mm-hmm. pretty smart the way they did it, and it's it's actually compelling, and there's some pretty interesting it, stuff. It's in interesting it. that okay. b- mainly because of like us going through the pandemic and everything, yes. they, they kind of there's sort of parallels there and that oh, they're, okay. they're portraying with it, but like in a a unique way. So. You know, it's funny. So we, there's been movies on pandemics in the past. It's like a common theme with sci-fi or whatever. Yeah. But now, doesn't it feel different to see stuff oh, like it that? Totally does. Yeah. Like I'm watching. I'm like, oh man. Yeah. Like, that that could happen. Yeah. I mean it's I mean it, again it's got that element of fantasy in it because obviously these like human animal hybrid things mm-hmm. that it, it makes a kind of a, a different twist to the whole uh, event. I haven't got to the part where they explain why that's like why that yeah. was like a big part of uh everything that happened but did you, it's interesting. Did, did you guys see too ever since we've been talking about this whole celebrity boxing thing like the, how much that's ramping up right now? Uh, so yeah, when they did like going, TikTok stars versus YouTube stars. They're doing like, that. <laughs> I saw uh, uh, <laughs> Good, beat the shit out of each other and, and uh, stop some, posting about Somebody it. told me Eddie Hall and not Robert Obrist, but another uh, another strongman are, are are supposed to be fighting. Bjorn, Bjorn um, uh, what's his yeah. name? The, 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 the Game of Thrones? I think well, so. he's, he already has the had Did you guys fights. know that? He's already done fights, though. The, the the What's his name again? The Game of Thrones guy. Yeah. He's yeah. already done fights, and Eddie Hall, I think, already has done a fight or two. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't. Did you guys know they were fighting each other? I think, no. Yeah. Well, they announced it a long time ago, and then I think they got a warm up fight in between, and so I think they're like now gonna gonna face each other. If you want to see where this could potentially go, look at um, old some of the the off pride fights that you saw in Japan, or look at Russian. You know, I'll do in quotations here MMA type fights. They're wild. Like the old pride fights in Japan, they would often do this like. Tiny guy versus a sumo wrestler, yeah, or his name's Hapthor. Yeah, Hapthor. Thank you. Yeah. A giant versus someone else. In Russia, it's even worse. They'll have like five versus five. <laughs> in, That's in so a, cool. In a ring, or they'll do like <laughs> three girls versus one guy, or they'll do armor and swords. armor with swords. That that one trips me out. They're like literally hacking on each other with swords. I mean, they're dull blades, but it's like metal. Like, Bro, brush. I saw one where the guy was using the shield. He knocked the guy down with a sword. And the guy's on the ground, and he takes his shield and fucks the guy yeah. up <laughs> with the shield. My favorite was when they, so they're fighting on different platforms. Right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. a guy climbs up on a platform, yeah. jumps yeah. off, and, ah! yeah, and dude. then the other guy's on the bottom, like trying to punch up at this guy. I, I think like, in Russia, they take, happening? they take alpha-ness and they just go a little too far with it. You know what I mean? They just go way <laughs> oh, too far. They're all in. <laughs> That's too yeah, far, they're dude. Just, they're just tough. Yeah. Speaking of uh, of tough and crazy, uh, Andre the Giant, right? You guys know, remember Andre the Giant? Of course. So for the listeners who don't know, or if viewers who don't know, he was one of the most popular pro wrestlers of all time. Massive monster of a guy. Huge guy. But what's interesting about this guy are some of the interesting things that he would do when he wasn't in the ring. 
Did you guys know that he holds the world record for drinking beer? Yeah. At what time? Yeah. I remember listening in that documentary with, uh, like, he could do, I, 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 basically, like, a couple of cases of beer was just, like, one beer for him. Uh, okay. So, he had this incredible ability to tolerate alcohol. It was just insane for some reason. So, check this out. It's the world record for the largest number of beers consumed in a single sitting. So he drank 12 ounce bottles of beer, so regular beers. Yeah. In six hours, he drank 119. <laughs> what? By himself. <laughs> what? That would kill somebody. 119 beers by himself. Yeah. Bro, you know how crazy that is? <laughs> yes, I know how we crazy used, that is. We, we used to play the century game. Did you guys ever play the century game? Oh, no, yeah, where, where you do a shot of beer. Every one minute. Every minute. So you make it, back then it was cassettes, okay? So we made a cassette tape that yeah. what, at every Everybody one minute. Everybody messed up. At every that. one minute more. Yeah, nobody finished the game, mm -mm. ever. And these are shots. They're, yeah, a shot, one ounce. One ounce of beer every minute for a hundred minutes and, and and people would just get throw up oh yeah you're throwing you're throwing yeah. at most people i mean every once in a while that was that was the the the, the game was who could, who's left standing yeah exactly right? who could, yeah. who stayed all the way in and made it to the hundred and i mean every once in a while you so hear smart. some story of bro somebody. he drank 119 well that's why i'm blown beers. away right now because i remember playing that game several times when we were kids and i always around like 80 80 or 90 shots i was puking my brains out by that time so to think that somebody crushed you know a hundred what almost a hundred times that right that's crazy that's, oh yeah that's, that's it's so all by himself wow it doesn't can't, it, you can't know, fathom it and you know what it doesn't even make sense if you do the ratio of his size so even if you do like okay that's well, right yeah. it still doesn't make sense because he's like he's basically like two big guys like combined yeah, and like two he, big guys like, couldn't do that 10 no. big guys would have a tough time with exactly that, you know so it's like he's got like a, a super liver or yeah. something <laughs> did you were reading some random shit the last you know what <laughs> so <laughs> I love it. where did these articles come when from? i find stuff like this you got good stuff right now. when i find stuff like this i always get very interested i always think like oh this would be a cool thing to bring up uh, on the show <laughs> yeah. Yeah. andre the giant's just fascinating i i tell you right, i right. encourage people to look them up the stories around him, you know, when they interviewed, uh, what's his name, Hulk Hogan. Oh, yeah. About Andre the Giant. Now, remember, Hulk Hogan is a big dude. He's yeah. not a small dude. Like, if he walks in the room, he's a he's giant. Like six eight or six yeah. nine. He's and, much bigger than all of us. Well, I don't know if he's that, but he's no, big. No, he is. He's is like he really? six seven or six eight. Maybe yeah, Doug a, can look up big guy. how tall Hulk Hogan is. And, and he's like super filled out, obviously. He's a, he's a, he's a monster, right? Yeah. And he says that when he would like spar with because remember pro wrestling is scripted in the sense that you know who's going to win yeah but the moves are real they're throwing you yeah they're hitting you and if they're a little irritated and this is true in in pro wrestling this was a, I, this is something i used to love to read about in pro wrestling if a guy's a little irritated with you or annoyed even if he's supposed yeah. to lose he's going to put a little more hurt on he'll you put some hurt he'll slap you like yeah, yeah. real hard yeah and it's just part of the it's just part of the sport well uh, hulk hogan said that with uh does it say how tall he was Six six, so he's a, uh, he's, six, a, six. he's a big dude. Yeah, Hulk Hogan said that Andre the Giant was a very kind, nice guy. He says, but one time he was teasing him, and he did this move where he, you know you know they do that move where they hit you with their forearm on your back. Yeah, and he says that Andre the Giant hit him with just a little extra force, and not even that hard, like it's his hardest. And he says, I realized in that moment that he could literally break my back if yeah, he felt like it. it. Yeah. Like he just could have killed me yeah, if he wanted to. Didn't he finally like let him or allow him to to pick him up to yes. finally win? Which I remember him talking about. They had that. to talk him it's into like, it. Yeah, they talked him into it because it was just like he didn't know if he could do it. He, he's like, I don't know if I could lift this guy and even hold him. It was just like so much weight. This mass. was the one of the biggest matches in in uh, pro wrestling. So do you know that he was yeah. also he's actually technically he's one of the better wrestlers of all time too. So in Bret Hart's uh, book, right? He you talking talk about the Andre the Giant? Uh huh. Oh yeah, he did it for a long time. Yeah, they yeah. talk. They talk about like he looks like this big, you know, clumsy, lumbering giant. But he actually his technique, as far as how, because there's a lot of like unsaid etiquette, like you're talking about, like you know, when you you hit, you a, can make a move hurt or not. Yeah, that's uh -huh. right, right, and and or you can just be bad at your craft and you hurt guys a lot. And there's guys that are known for that, and people who like refuse to wrestle with other dudes. And so there's a lot of that going on behind the scenes, and. Uh, supposedly, he was like supposed to be like one of the more technical wrestlers of all time. Yeah, you guys, as like how good he was. Have you guys heard the story about Hulk Hogan and how he, when he wanted to get in pro wrestling, there was like this famous Japanese pro wrestling school, mm -hmm. and he wanted to learn there, and but he went in all cocky. Have you guys ever heard this story? No. Yeah, I have. So he went in there, and he's a, obviously Hulk Hogan's a huge guy, I was and he a big goes Hulk in, Hogan fan. and yeah. it's this like you know Japanese school for pro wrestling, and he's obviously bigger than everybody in there. 
And he says he went in there all cocky, like, oh, no, I'm going to be the best pro wrestler of all time and not showing respect to them or whatever. And he says that the Japanese instructor broke his ankle, like basically got him an ankle lock and broke it. And <laughs> so then Hulk Hogan. And he got humbled and like came back. He right? came back yeah. with the cast and mm-hmm. he apologized, was very respectful. And then he was able to learn all the skills and stuff. <laughs> it's a very interesting world. I don't know if it's like this anymore, but back in those days, there was a lot of tradition and you know, like sumo wrestling. I don't know if you guys ever heard about sumo wrestling, but there's lots of tradition around. Read, oh, yeah. Look into, and I believe they made a documentary, and maybe Doug can look up the title of uh, Bret Hart's book. It's, I mean, it's a, it's like a Bible, and it's like, and they're and, a famous family, right? Well, they're they're the originate. They originated in in Canada in their dad's basement. Wow. And so they're they're they it goes way back to them, and like he's part of the the original like group of what is it, Doug? Yeah, there's the documentary right there. Uh, Brett Hitman Hart. I don't know if that's that was his name. name. Yeah. yeah, that's that. So 365 that, days of wrestling. Is that what it was? Uh, I don't know. No, that's not it. The the, the book. Um, I'll I'll take a picture and I'll share with the audience. Okay. Um, uh, and I'll I'll share with you guys. It was a really really good book, but it gets into all this. But it talks about the the origin story of like how it all started in his dad's basement and stuff like that. Did you guys ever have you guys ever met some of these pro wrestlers after they retire? And, and you ever meet these guys? I've seen them, like, but I, we haven't hung out. Bro, they're tracking. they're broken. Yeah, they're oh, all yeah, yeah, yeah. broken. And I, I met the Iron Sheik, and he was like, he could barely move. And he was you met him there. like in person, yeah, at a show or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met oh, him. This cool. was way after, right, when he was done. Yeah, and he, he was at a fitness convention. Mm. But you, I mean, these guys break and destroy their bodies. Well, uh, what was it? The wrestler with uh, uh, I forget the name of the actor. Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke was uh, very accurate. I, I felt like that. Yeah, depicted it pretty well in terms of them being in constant pain, but also still trying their best to like uh, keep it going mm-hmm. and, and still like do shows. Now, w- were you guys a bigger Hulk Hogan fan or Ultimate Warrior? Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, me too. I, yeah. was, I was Hogan. You were Hogan? I was Hogan. Of course. Yeah, yeah, All yeah. American. Uh, I liked Hogan too, though, but I was like a big Ultimate Warrior. Uh, yeah, fan. I just, because Ultimate Warrior looked like a I mean, like he was cool. Yeah, he was really cool, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was him and like Junkyard Dog and, uh, you know, all those guys. Oh, yeah. yeah. The British Bulldog, I liked him too, because he was all. <laughs> All super jacked. Away. That was the first time I ever like started to wa- wanted a bulldog. I remember that was like the first time I'd seen one, and I like I wanted one when I was little. And then it was when uh, God, what was the name of the show with uh, Robin Big? When Robin Big came out and he had his his little meaty uh, bulldog. Oh, that's what all made right. You want skateboarding. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, the two yeah, of those. I, I was I was a British bulldog fan as a wrestler, so I always loved him. Loved it and uh, loved him as a wrestler, and then loved that he had the bulldog. And then later on was the Robin Big when I saw this personality. on Now, there. before you had your your, I dog- feel like Adams would be like Razor Ramon. Yeah. Oh yeah. no, dude! A razor no, no, no. Guy. He's what's his name, bro? Oh, Ravishing the million Rick dollar Rue. man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ravishing that's, Rick. Rue. That's there you, it is. Bro. Yeah, that's it. That's he it. goes <laughs> out to the ring and he, he's got the he's got the, the pink leotard with the lips on the butt. And he, he remember he would bring your girl out of the audience and uh-huh. just like and just make, make out, out with her. Oh, <laughs> that was you, dude. So great. <laughs> Ravishing Rick Rue. I forgot about him. All handsome and you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, hey, dude. so before you had your bulldogs, did you know the work involved with? Because they're very. I did. So I. So you did all the research. I did. Yeah, I bought a book on i bought a, a book on just dogs in general and then i bought a bulldog book read all about them before and the so the the f- first original selling point was watching the personality of uh you know their meaty the bulldog that's on mm-hmm. robin big so that was what i first like oh my god their personalities are so cool this i mean i wonder if they're all like this and then i went and bought a book and started reading up on them and the selling point for me was at that time i had my condo so i had this like you know, 1700 square foot, three bedroom, two bath, you know, townhouse that I lived in. And, you know, I, up in that point, I had dogs growing up, but never as an adult uh, having my own place. And I'm like, I don't want to, you know, I don't want like a lab or like a Weimaraner, or like a big, like outdoor run around dog. And I have a townhouse. I'll feel terrible. Right. So I started looking up dogs that were, that didn't need a lot of exercise. And that was like the key thing about bulldogs. Yeah, I think they're number one in that. They are. They yeah. are. They're like, as far as like their activity level is extremely uh, low. And I'm like, oh, this is perfect. The dog that just wants to sleep and be lazy will be, which is kind of ironic being a fitness guy, right? But <laughs> I think matches my personality at home. I think we were, one of us was talking about this the other day. Off, oh yeah. Off air. Yeah, that, you're very chill at home. Yeah, I'm very different uh, at home than I have, have ever been at work. You know, I've always been, you know, talking yeah, I'm and going. And then when I get home, I'm like all quiet mm, yeah. <laughs> and chill, watch TV, do yeah. nothing type of thing. But they, but they require a lot of 
of work with like diet, yeah, and so, medical stuff. Yeah, so they have they they tend to have a lot of you know, ear and nose and breathing and you know tail. Now, and, is it true that a female bulldog can't give birth to bulldogs naturally? There has to be intervention, or is that a myth? Uh, I think I think the statistics on it are really high that they'll have a C-section. I think that's because the, ba- the the bulldog's heads are so big, right? Yeah. Okay. So I I do know that they it, they have C-sections a lot. I don't know stati- like I haven't bred them, so I actually don't know if it's like a it, mandatory all the mm-hmm. time. That's a good question. My cousin would be able to answer that. Who who breeds the French bulldogs? Mm. Which by the way, did you see? Did I show you guys his little his little uh, ones coming out? I the, love French. What do bulldogs. they call that? Uh, the the markings. On yeah, the it's called a, a Merrill. Merrill, that's yeah, right. Merrill color, really which, cool looking dog. Oh, it's such a cool, and he, you, you know, he's got a, he's been working on this for like two years to get to those genetics. So it's not like that's, you know, he's he had to, you know, breed with this one dog, and then he would, and he's paid like crazy money, dude. Hmm. People are paying like thirty thousand dollars. What? For this. Yes, <laughs> a puppy. That's thir- crazy. Now he's all papered up, right? So they're all he has. I mean, all their well. I mean, for thirty thousand, you probably have to. Yeah, be. yeah. Their lineage, and then on top of that, the the rare coloring. Thirty thousand. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Especially like like he's kind of, like my cousin got him from some somebody who like sells shit gold. Sells that's all what I'm it. saying. <laughs> yeah, no, that's <laughs> buy well. I mean, do your homework for I think, you or something. Right? I think most people. I mean, unless you're like like super rich and famous, you you don't just spend thirty grand for it as a pet. Most people, if you oh. spend thirty thousand, you probably have intentions to probably breed them yourself. What to say, Doug? About oh, yeah. the yeah, most uh, bulldog breeds cannot give birth naturally. Most, but it's not all. Is that right? Yeah. No, yeah. General bulldog puppies are often too large for the birth canal. Yeah. Mm, the vagina's too small. Hey. Yeah. So for it, the big heads. It, I guess so. So it does. This is a, a trained veterinary perform a C section. Yeah. Okay. So I knew they do C sections. I didn't know if it was like every time or like when only when they have multiple. Like, I wonder mm. at what point that happened because I'm sure they weren't C sectioning bulldogs, you know, fifty, hundred years ago. So at some point they kept breeding them to get bigger heads and to look more, you know, bulldogish. Mm-hmm. And at some point they're like, well, we went a little too far, but here we go. We got to yeah. do C sections now every single time. Yeah. Because have thing. you seen? Uh, do you know what American bulldogs are? Mm-hmm. So American bulldogs, They're taller, taller breed. They, yeah, yeah, that's what bulldogs basically used to look like. Yeah, if you see like old pictures of uh, of bulldogs, they were tall. They were yeah. fighting dogs or, or bull baiting is what they used to do with them, where they would take a bull, they tie the bull to a stake in the ground, and then they would sick dogs on the bull. And the goal was for the dog to pin the bull on the ground, and so they bred bulldogs with the underbite mm. because it allowed the dog to hold on to the nose of the bull, but continue to breathe because the nose is pushed back with the lower jaw pushed forward. Yeah. Really interesting. Fun, well, fun it, fact. And you can see that in their personality. It's really, uh, there's, I don't know if you Oh, I'm like, sure tug of war with them is hilarious. Oh, yeah, they're yeah. so strong, dude. They're, they're they, once, tenacious. Yeah, they're like a pit once they lock in, once they lock the jaw and something like that, mm-hmm. they're not letting go. And yeah, they're fearless too. Like mm-hmm. there's, that was one thing that always scared me about with Bentley was notorious for that. Like he would, didn't matter how big the dog was, like he was not intimidated to go take. I'm like, bro, that thing is like three times your size. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know. Dude, yeah, just, calm down. Yeah, don't give a shit. I had no. a, a friend whose Chihuahua literally killed a Rottweiler. Did I ever tell you guys? About no. This? Yes. What? I don't yes. That what? For a second. The Rottweiler choked on the Chihuahua. Uh, and died. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. That was Thank good. Yeah, was like, good. Yeah. Dude, stop it. Dude, I, just, yeah. I made up the story. Uh, 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 <laughs> I mean, they little they think. They yeah. got a chance. Wow, which that is dog hilarious. killed the other dog. That's great. Yeah, yeah, Louis can yeah, eat it. Yeah, it's a joke. Dude, speaking everybody. of animals, though, so I have this great new theory. Somebody sent me an article, and of course, this is like humor, satire, whatever. But uh, we were talking about the Loch Ness Monster. Yeah. And so, you know, before that, there was a picture that had uh, one picture kind of looked like a fish, like the the side of a fish, whatever. But then, you know, it doesn't account for some of those pictures you've seen where it almost looks like it has like a snout or something that's kind of sticking mm-hmm. out. Like maybe it's its head. Yeah. Uh, and so somebody sent me a picture and it's all of these whales. Like basically the underside of them was pointed up and, <laughs> and the whale dick was out and it curved oh, I saw that. just like that. It totally looks like all the pictures of the old Loch Ness Monsters. I'm like, we figured it out. It's, it's a, a big whale, whale dick. dick. Wow. How big is a whale dick? It's big. It's I gotta be huge. I mean, it is. I didn't look that up. Substantial. How big is Yo, a whale dick? I saw dick? that picture Justin's talking about. It's massive. I didn't realize that. Uh, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a whale dick before. I mean, it's, well, it's I've impressive. Never, I've, like, uh, I've never Congratulations. Yeah, I've don't never... they, isn't that what they make uh, chapstick out of or something? 
Uh, no. I'm pretty sure they don't make it out Chapsticks. of wheelchairs. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> yes, they, or, or lip balm or like lipstick. Well, they, they use the, the throw up. Uh, yeah. You, you know? No, okay, so that. they use whale dick for something, Doug. Find no, out. No, no. <laughs> They do. No, they this don't. could be a great search history. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, oh my it's God. already been tarnished. Look at that thing. That's a mess. Look at that. That's huge, dude. Yeah. I'm sure it's a delicacy somewhere. Doug, look it up and see what. Oh, uh, they... you you know, <laughs> you know, on those markets, they're 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 gobbling dude, up some whale dick. I guarantee, <laughs> if you go to a Chinese wet market in China, yeah, dude, you'll find some yeah, some frying up some some yeah. whale dick tonight. whale dick soup. Yeah. I'm sure you'll find over there. Yeah. Wow, that's huge. I mean, it makes sense. Whales are huge. You can't have a small. Well, it's that'd be weird. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. I just don't think I've ever seen it's a picture of one proportionate. before. I mean, I haven't seen many. You animal guys dicks, didn't know. So I, I I'm almost certain I could be wrong though. I've been, horses I've been are, wrong once or twice. Horses are pretty. Show. I'm not seeing that. Thing. What are? Could you look up what are whale dicks used for? It's for for, <laughs> probably for, for impregnating <laughs> other whales. Yeah, that, that won't come up though. Uh, yeah. No, I've I've looked it up. I didn't search whale As dick. A I I've searched whale penis since Thank that's you. more uh, technical. More anatomical. Yeah. I feel like whale dick might pull. Up however, some the blue whale too. has a penis average penis length of 2.5 meters. Wow. How, uh, speak English, Doug. That's we're, we're, we don't use meters. Well, that's only yeah. That's three feet. Well, that's about that's, six. No, that's, that's not that big. Three six. yards. Yeah, meters. Th so that's oh, like that's yard. like nine feet long. Oh, like holy three meters shit. One yard, right? I don't know. I How don't many know. feet no, is that? Nine uh, feet. So a yard is a little bit less than a meter. Okay. All right. Oh. So it's, so, yeah, so you say no, how many so feet? It's times three. Then why? How did you get you? You got fuzzy math there. It should be six. Six feet. No, okay, so the meter is longer than a yard. How much longer? Are they almost a meter and a yard almost well, the same? I'll do a, a okay. yeah, we better check, check on this. This, this right. is real easy. Here's yeah. what you do. You put <laughs> three meters. Yeah. No, 2.5 meters. I really want to get a handle on the size of this 2.5 <laughs> meters equals in in feet, okay? Uh, there uh, we go. Eight it's, feet. It's 8.2. 8. So oh, okay. I was off by okay. a little less than oh, a foot. An eight-foot right. dick. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just in the in the powerful, world. and they don't use it for anything, huh? Other than impregnating any other whales. <laughs> yeah, what do you use yours for? Well, well, come on, I want to know. <laughs> Are you, you, do you use yours for chapstick? What the hell? <laughs> I mean, maybe I got suckered into that chapstick. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't chapstick. <laughs> Adam was like, "Man, my lips are so, chapped." Some good, yeah. whale, some good whale dick. I got, I, I got something for you, bro. Yeah, just, yeah. It'll cure the chapness. Yeah, yeah. Hey, keep it nice and moist. Since we're talking about uh, of genitals, uh, I read this very interesting article on testicle size. And its correlation to attractiveness. You guys want to hear something weird? Ooh. I'm very interested in okay, this. Okay, so this is in study in primates, and they think for sure it applies to humans. So in primates, the more attractive features that the primate has with their face and their body, and again, they're saying this is true for humans too, the smaller the testicles. The less attractive the primate, the larger the testicles. Wow. Okay? Okay. So and this, by the way, this is well known. I didn't know this. So I read this article. Somebody sent me this. Well, article. they're out in the open, so it's not you know, it's definitely on display. Yeah, but what you're basically saying though is the 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 uglier you are, the more likely you're going to have big balls. And yes. The more attractive mm, you correct. are, the more likely you are to have small balls. Correct. Correct. Mm. So it says here. So so it says. Uh, so you guys you guys want to know what the explanation is? Yeah. Why? Okay. So if you're attractive, then you're probably you, you don't need to compete as much to impregnate. If you're not attractive, you're going to have bigger testicles produce more sperm because you're less likely to get laid. So when you do, you got to shoot a bigger... <laughs> you got one chance. <laughs> you got to shoot more sperm. You got to go all in. So, you know, uh, you know, like Adam's very handsome, right? So I think we can assume... <laughs> oh, <it's, it's>, wow. <laughs> I mean, if we're going to go by the nature standards... Yeah, uh, no, no, but isn't that... That's so weird, right? Yeah, so yeah. fascinating. I, I, I heard you... Um, was it you who was talking about balls this? Balls aren't that popular. You know? I, I don't hear women talking about balls. Yeah, they don't do much, do yeah, they? The yeah. ornamental. Anyways. No, the whole the whole idea of um, sex at dawn and the you know multiple partners thing. Oh, yeah. The part, part of, I think it was you who heard, I said this or I heard you talking to someone about that. Part of the reason why that- I was that, talking to my son about it at the, at the was baptism. Was it that? Yeah. Okay. The, one of the reasons why it fell out of favor was that- what it just would cause men to be fighting right over each other yeah, all the time. Yeah, so, so they the studies will show. I thought this was interesting. Because yeah, studies I, will show culturally that as societies grow, if men, um, you know, gather more than one mate, 
that it causes lots of instability. Because what ends up happening is the you imagine the super attractive, wealthy right. guy who's established gets then your ugly guy girl, with big girls. girls isn't you know getting any action. <laughs> yeah. 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 he's getting angry. Yeah, yeah. And then the regular <laughs> yeah. dude is like, yeah. man, every, you know Jeff Bezos got all the girls. I got yeah. nothing, right? So, so societies organized themselves as they grew to monogamy because it promoted uh, peace. And this is one of the prevailing theories, believe it or not. Of course, it's a theory. But uh, studies actually show this to. to yeah, be so I, much I think it's a really interesting theory. I never heard that before, and I overheard you or somebody you were talking to bring that up, and I thought, oh, you know, no, I, I've never taken it that far. Like, oh, what if we all adopted this idea mm -hmm. that we're all supposed to bang each other? Mm -hmm. you know, what does that potentially look like? And you're right; it's going to it's, it's going to be like the eighty twenty rule. Mm. The you know twenty percent of the super attractive wealthy guys that could take care of all these girls are going to get eighty percent of the women, and then that means you've got a large population of men that don't have a mate that are what, and then what do they do in a, you know, survival of the fittest type of environment? Yeah. Yeah. You probably, they get aggressive. Yeah, yeah. This is why they think that that's interesting. This is why they think that popular, you know, religious and spiritual practices and, uh, you know, societies that have flourished, uh, encourage monogamy. It was one way to control part of that. The other way to, the other reason of course is, you know, what men are much more likely to, I guess to bounce after they get someone pregnant. You still see that today, right? If it nine out of ten times a single parent is a, a female, it's because men don't have the same. Typically, we don't have the same biological, uh, you know, drive to stick around, and societally, we don't have the same pressures. In fact, I, I've, it's so funny. We have this friend whose ex husband shows up, you know, to, to hang out with the kids, you know, twice a week. And everybody's like, oh, he's a good dad. Like you would never hear them say that about a mom that showed up twice a week. Right? Societal pressures are also <laughs> yeah, right, so true. not so strong. And so um, monogamy was one way to make sure that the man stuck around to keep, you know, to take care of the the babe, the kids and have them grow up. And all, all that yeah, yeah. Stuff. So it's an important part of, you know, of big. Uh, Very interesting society. though. I never, yeah. I had never heard that before. Yeah. Anyway, um, something else that's cool. Did you guys, so they did this report on, so recently we've had lots of, unemployment benefits and money going out because of the pandemic and stuff. They did this huge report. You guys want to hear something like kind of scary mm -hmm. and, and shitty. So they estimate, I'm going to read this. To the economy or what? Well, I'm going to read this. So this is a, this is a study that came out and they think they're estimating that criminals may have stolen as much as half of the unemployment benefits. The U S has been pumping out over the past year. What? Yes. How's that possible? Well, through uh, lying. Oh, through it's like fraud. Fraud, oh, right? Okay. Half. Yes. That's I insanely believe, alarming. I believe Ready that. for this? I believe With that. the bulk likely ending up in the hands of foreign crime syndicates. What? Oh so they, God. so because they see all these benefits are, are being given out and because they're so easily, I mean, it's not that hard, I guess, to commit fraud with some of the stuff, and we don't have the resources to check on everything. So foreign crime syndicates are finding ways to get this taxpayer money. And so half is what they're estimating. How crazy is that? <laughs> How are we going to reconcile this? Uh, we can't. Just dude. print double now? <laughs> yeah, just keep printing <laughs> that, it out. I mean, if you were to ask the government, that would I mean, be the strategy. That, so far, that's what oh, I've well, seen. Oh, we'll just do double next yeah, time. Well, then. Yeah, 50%. <laughs> oh, yeah, my God. Yeah. yeah, and a trillion doesn't mean anything anymore. Have you guys noticed that? Yeah. Oh, the budget went up another trillion. Oh, that's only a trillion more than last time. You yeah. know how much money a trillion is? Yeah. It's insane number. That's yeah. a huge number. Yeah, you can't even spend that in a lifetime. Yeah, no. They don't even, they don't even care. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's insane. Yeah. Wow. I see retail sales are, are coming down right now, too. So you're starting to see the balance of balancing out of the economy a little bit. Did you know that when like we, we is that because travels taking off yes. more? Yeah. Okay. Oh, so that's I see. so when we there, if you see this chart right right before COVID hits, um, when COVID hits, you see this massive spike in like retail sales. Yeah, because everybody's at home ordering. That's right, not yeah. doing anything, still getting paid and stuff like that. So that and they can't go anywhere or so like that. So this just massive spike and that kind of maintained throughout this last year. And it's never been like that. Typically travel is actually above that. So in, in hotel and all that, that's all included in that type of stuff, right? Is higher than than retail. And it's been flipped all year and then it's been slowly doing this. And then it's it's for the first time in over a year now, it's kind of leveled back out where travel. I mean, I, ju I just think that's such a great bet right now for those that are like looking at stock and stuff to invest in, I think. Travel, travel. Anything, re anything related to that. I yeah. mean, even like uh, if you, if you Airlines, like. Airlines, hotels. New companies that uh, that do, uh, you know, uh, suitcases and things like that, or even like stuff like that. Anything that's related to that, that is, I think, going to see a nice little spike over the next year because of I wonder how Airbnb is going to do sure. during that period. Probably better. 
Oh, yeah. No, that's, oh, yeah. I would assume, I mean, right? Yeah. yeah People yeah. are on the move. So, yeah, that's going to be a viable option. You know, so remember that thing I sent you guys, that link that you could buy, like, uh, what was it, like a room at MGM in, in Las Vegas? Yeah, yeah. So these are hotel rooms. So yeah. obviously they have casinos over there. And they have Vegas has very strict laws uh, against Airbnb in certain areas, obviously to protect their casinos. Mm -hmm. However... Many of these casinos will sell blocks of rooms. Now, there's a lot that goes into it. You have to pay a huge fees associated with it. When I, but the prices went down a lot during the pandemic yeah. because so few people were traveling. Yeah. That would have been a great opportunity, right? Because I can imagine that- the, I mean, I looked at it. I ran the numbers and it was it, it was okay. It's not as- it's. It's what was not, wrong with it? What do you mean? Uh, well, because you you have the HOAs that you're referring to are like a thousand dollars a month. Yeah. So I mean, you have a thousand dollars a month. You had a half a million dollar was on the kind of the lower end for those those condos or whatever. So you're looking at a mortgage that's you know somewhere around twenty five hundred dollars a month, and then you got to factor in all your cleaning fees, and then you got to factor in the thousand dollar HOAs, and then the rooms only rent for about one hundred eighty to two forty a night. So mm. you do the math, like you need like you'd have to really full, fill it up. Yeah, right? it's got to be. I mean, it, obviously, if it's never empty, then yeah, it's a profitable thing. But you don't want to get into a place that you're going to try an Airbnb out when you want to factor in vacancy, even though. Vacancy, I imagine, in Las Vegas, in the heart of of downtown, it's probably low when everything's fine. Dude, yeah, are are timeshares still a thing? Yeah, I was wondering about that because mm -hmm. you know that was like a huge push. Uh, I don't know, maybe a decade or so ago, where everybody and their mother had to have like a timeshare. I share. never did. You guys ever get in? Did you guys ever have one? My uh, parents have one, and they're they like, do. They were like trying to. Oh, you know, someday you'll. I'm like, I don't want it because you got to pay all the fees and everything yeah. involved, and it's like you're all like have to earn points and all this nonsense. I'm like, I just want to go when I want to go. So, have you guys ever gotten a trip or an offer for a super inexpensive trip? But yeah, and then you have to go. It, you have to go sit everywhere, and sit and listen yeah, to one of those like, things. Yeah, yeah Bass Pro Shop was trying. I've done that one, one time. I'll never do that again you know oh so what, what was it like worst. oh it's awful they i mean they not only do they trap you there for a few hours that you have to listen to the lecture but then the amount of hard closes and tos you get to get out the door <laughs> it's like yeah it's like 10 or 15 in a row yeah. just hammering you hard you too. can't just be like oh no thank you we don't want it like <laughs> it's like oh okay well yeah let me go get my manager and then they'll come okay, over but here like what could you do yeah you they, know, like, they hard close in fact i can't remember so you now when this happened to you you were already in sales and stuff so you kind of knew what, what oh totally i knew exactly so what you didn't going. just tell them like no 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 i I'm did out. i mean that we didn't end yeah. up buying or no. paying but it, it's I, it, it's up there. Okay, so to give you kind of an analogy, like it makes like uh, the aggr the aggressiveness of a, a sales counselor on closeout look like a wuss. Like that's how aggressive. So they it's are. just uncomfortable. Yeah, oh. Yes, uncomfortable. Yeah, like, and they don't care at all. That, and that, that's how I think they get. They they make you stay hard close so hard that you probably get a lot of people just get pressured into yeah. like oh, okay, I don't want to deal. They with just it get anymore. muscled. Yeah. There, there, there's so many drops they can do and ways they can present it, and so, and they start at the the top and they give you the whole big and then then they didn't they just and they know how to do it. Get you down to like give me a number. Well, what you know if it was a number. That you would so, just, so just it's, a hypothetical. You're like it's not about the price. We're like really. What if it was a dollar? Yeah. Then would you do exactly. it? Exactly. Well, I mean, if it was a dollar, yeah. would, well, so then it is the price. Yeah. Oh, oh they were. They're like <laughs> it's like that. That's, that's an old school club. I remember right. thinking like when I was going through it, like damn, where were where were you guys at when I was looking for employees to hire? Man, I <laughs> yeah. so my cousin did one, and he know he knew that they were going to do this, and so he literally the whole time he was just like, I'm just here for the for the free trip. I'm just here for the free trip. No, you can give it to me for free, and I don't want it. I don't care. You can pay me to take it and I don't want it. And you just kept saying that over and over. Yeah, over I mean, you, and obviously there's yeah, people that do, do that. this. Like I know people that actually will take advantage of those all the time because they, they are like, fuck it, it's three hours of my day. I just got to go dedicate Yeah, because you'll get like a crazy deal, like yeah. a, like a, a week vacation for yeah. you know, oh, 500 bucks. That's yeah. a hard three hours though. It you is. Know, it's, it's not easy three hours to mm -hmm. get through. That's yeah. what I'm saying. And some people are like, hey, it's worth it if I say- yeah, I did it once. I'll never do yeah, it. Oh, I, you did it too? Yeah. Where yeah. where'd you go? I did it. Um, I I think it was it wasn't Palm Desert, but it was uh, it it was somewhere with my parents. I think it, no, it was it was in Kauai, and, and they were trying for the Marriott, and they were mm -hmm. trying to like hammer you on on timeshares for that. And yeah. it was just like, dude, this is like I got a, a nice uh, free trip out of it. I'm I don't want to like it, I, like I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to keep doing this. So I just had to keep saying no, 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 no the whole way through it. Like there was like a whole table of these guys, and they like, had to make well, this guy had to sit through his pitch. 
pitch, and then okay, if that didn't work, then we're going to bring in this guy over here, and so then you just so sit they, through. They to it like ten yeah. times. You know what? The, okay, so for people who don't know what a to is, it literally stands for turnover or takeover, and it's a psychological strategy because. And I remember learning this as a, as a salesperson in gyms. When someone says no to you, they haven't said no to someone else. So, mm-hmm. like if Adam and I and just let's say Adam, Justin, and I are selling a car and Adam's the first guy to talk to you, and you tell him, no, I don't want the car. Well, that's cool. You said no to him, but you haven't said no to me yet. That's right. And and psychologically, now you th- logically you think, well, of course I did, because you're all selling the same car. No, psychologically, you still have to explain yourself to the new person. That's right. And so it's like a start. It's a turnover. It's and, a and each guy gets the information from the previous guy, so he has a new angle to present it. Exactly. So if you did the first guy, you said like, oh, yeah, well, we... You know, those weeks in the year aren't very good for me. Yeah. And I don't so have no, time we, in my schedule. Okay, yeah. we're going to get a schedule guy in here. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. He's going yeah. to plant <laughs> those yes. and plot And then the next guy comes in and he overcomes that objection. <laughs> yeah. And so you, it gets, ex- I mean, I would love to see the statistics on how many people start off by saying no and, and then end get, up saying yes. And then end up saying yes because they Well, they, the, the strategy is like, uh, oh, so, uh, you know, ske- I'm sorry, my schedule's really packed. Okay, so if we could figure out the schedule. That's right. If there's anything else. Is that the only thing that's yeah. preventing you from buying, getting started today? <laughs> like, well, yeah, it is. Yeah. And then, okay. Go ahead and get your schedule right I, now. I, I rem- go through it. <laughs> I remember when I did my Tom Hopkins Mastering the Art of the Sale. This was actually paid for by 24 hour fitness when i first started it was like this whole sales training course yeah. and he teaches all he teaches all these basic you know techniques and all that stuff and then i went to go buy a car and i remember like they like they it's like someone pulled open the curtain i was like oh you're doing this you this is an alternate advance this is what's going on and i remember the guy doing one of these things a blank piece of paper and he goes, okay, so this is the price you'll buy it for? And I said, yeah. And then he goes, okay, go ahead and initial right here. Like, what is that? Is that a contract? <laughs> what he's doing, he's getting my commitment That's so right. you can go tell his boss That's and right. come back and say, congratulations. Now, what you guys, we so I, I, I mean, if I'm in that situation, of course I'm, I'm annoyed, like probably many people are. But then I also, I don't get mad because I also know it's their job and yeah, their livelihood right. and I can appreciate good sales. So uh, it reminds me when we, uh, remember when we first started working with Organifi and we we found out like how how good they were on sales? Like yeah, they're, yeah. they have have a call the center. follow-ups like immediate. Yeah. Now, now the difference is in today, especially you can't be as aggressive or too much pressure because reviews now go on the internet. Yeah. So now if you piss someone off back in the day, you go buy a car and the guy hammers you. Yeah. You might tell a couple friends, yeah. but now you go online and you screw them. It has to be helpful. Right? Yeah. Like they have to be like very prompt and on top of it, but it has yes. to still lead with There's, that help. Yeah. And that's it. what Organifi is yeah. exceptional. No, no, they're they great. really do a good they job. Ha- no, I mean, it's an art now. It really is. Like, can I be aggressive and bump sell and get a sale out of this, but at the same time too- Provide so much value. Yes. Can I provide so much value and service that the people after they get off the phone, even if they don't buy- yeah, we were a little nervous about that uh, in the beginning. I remember that. Oh, I such a sales force. Well, you know, me. I remember our our because right, our private forums always quick to let us know when they don't like something, right? So I remember that that was like right away we heard stuff like, man, they are really aggressive with this, and and then we went through the process ourselves, and I'm like, oh man, they're just ex- they're yeah. extremely helpful. They follow yeah. up on a sale, they call you, they want you. For, the first thing they do is like, hey, we want to make sure that you are, you know, if you need any help with how you're using the supplement, do you take it at this time, or do you have any questions about it? So they come from and, a very and the right. truth is, if you look at their reviews, they have excellent reviews because more often than not somebody buying a product likes that much help yeah they yeah. want to know yeah how do i use and they're this? all trained you know so they know exactly like all the ingredients and like recommendations yes. for their, all of their products so yes. it's not just like you're talking to a sales rep no yes. i actually think it's a it's a big part of what helped them scale because when i all of our other friends that we have in the supplement space they're the only ones I know that have a call center team like that that does that, and so I'm sure that 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 extra that customer, plays a huge role. oh yeah, that extra customer service hand holding process through people. Not only that, but I think they even do this. I'm not sure about this, but I think they do this where, you know, if someone bought something that you know is like a 30 day cycle, something they I think they do like midway they they touch bases with mm-hmm. that person, and that it's just that's no different than like when you we used to have clients that we had personal train that. We knew we had to get them get them going on their contract in the first like twelve days or something like that. I forget what the statistic was because every every day or week after that it reduces the likelihood. Yeah, of them reduces it. the likelihood of them using it. So you know, I know they've been trained to like make sure we get a hold of these people, make sure they're using it properly if they have any questions, just simply to get them to stay consistent with usage because we know if they use it, yeah. they'll like they'll the get product. the benefits of it. That's well, right. It's, Otherwise, they won't. It's true. I'll give you an example. Like uh, we we talk a lot about Organifi Pure. This is their their type of new. Uh, literally product. my favorite product right of theirs. right 
using it on an empty stomach is a is a total different experience than using it with food. Use it on an empty stomach, you really feel it. Use it with food, far more subtle, far more mild, right? So having someone explain that to you, because you could be someone that you don't know, you buy the product and you have a big old ass, you know, lunch and then you take it and then yeah. you're like, eh, I don't yeah. know if I- Well, it's still kind of groggy. Yeah, so you want to be able to, you know, know that because it makes that big of a difference yeah, if yeah. you, you know, if you do it the right way. Totally. Anyway, some more cool stuff. I found a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Shelling them out today. So Amazon, right? We've talked a lot about Amazon recently, in particular, Jeff Bezos. And we just recently talked about how much he donated. His wife, by the way, is continuing to donate yeah. more. Yeah. I think she just gave another billion dollars oh. to some. That, that's amazing. I know it's pretty crazy, but did you guys know that Amazon has eliminated marijuana from their drug test screening? Really? So if they drug test employee, so they treat now they said they treat marijuana like alcohol. In other words, we don't care if you smoke weed, just don't come to work high. Just like we don't care if you drink alcohol, just don't come to work drunk. Right. right. Mm -hmm. But it used to be if they did a drug test and marijuana showed up, oh, you'd yeah. be in trouble. You fired. Not anymore. Now, oh wow. Now, now you have weed. That's all good. Just don't come to work high. I mean, that makes sense. Totally makes you know, sense. Yeah, it is. It, it's interesting though that they're probably like one of the big examples of the first company to really roll it out, right? Well, I mean, okay. With I'm gonna I'm gonna tread carefully here. You're a tech company. You're highly competitive. You rely on lots of creativity. <laughs> you're you're going to hire people that probably you need to chill out after a really hard yeah, day. Yeah, you're yeah. going to hire people that probably you know have a little bit. Well, of weed, what is know? the statistic on weed smokers too? Now it's like crazy high. Yeah. It had to have jumped up. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's really high. I want to say it's like 50-50, isn't it? It's like a 50-50 shot that if you meet somebody that they probably smoke weed or have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're saying yeah. they're not. Very few people have it. I forgot. In fact, I, th I forgot what there was a um, an agency in the government. I don't remember what it was. I think there was like this agency that would uh, like counter hackers or something. So it's like this very high tech agency in the government where they're hiring people to prevent hackers from hacking into, you know, government websites and stuff like that. Mm. And they couldn't find anybody because everybody failed the weed. Every time they did a drug test, they failed weed. Oh, yeah. And it's like, listen, you're trying to hire highly creative tech, you know, people who are like super dead, whatever, they're all going to smoke weed. Yeah. Like you're not going to find anybody. <laughs> yeah. More than likely it's there. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? You, you know, the, the gold seal market's going to plummet. Yeah. I know that much. Some yeah. of my best ideas came high, man. I mean, some, yeah, I mean, also some worse, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what you get. That's no, it. The next day is really where you evaluate that. Yeah. That's what you get. Yeah. With, that's <laughs> a, that's part of, that's part of the deal. You know what I'm saying? So you always have to like the next day sober, go like, let me go back and wait, look at all my notes. Mm, because I thought it was brilliant last yeah. night. We'll find out yeah. today if yeah. it really yeah. is oh, that brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that was a little too yeah. esoteric. Yeah. yeah, Hawaiian punch flavored ramen. Yeah, that was a that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> <Put that laughs> <out. laughs> Yummy. Let's put that away. <laughs> hey, real quick, you want bigger arms? Do you want nice six pack abs? Would you like to become a better personal trainer? Would you like learning all the stuff and more? Head over to mindpumpfree.com. We have a bunch of free guides that you can download and learn from. Again, they're totally free. They cost nothing. Mindpumpfree.com. All right, enjoy the rest of this podcast. All right, our first question is from Bailal Salvatore. Can you still progress in lifts while cutting? Uh, you can, but the more advanced you are, the more challenging this yeah, gets. Yeah, the less likely yeah, it is. Yeah, so when I would train clients, if they were new, if they were beginners, if they hadn't worked out in a while, then they would always progress in their lifts, even yeah. while cutting. You because you, you would see those those initial strength gains. And remember, a lot of the initial lift uh, lift progress comes from the central nervous system firing better, better technique with the lifts. Not necessarily because you have more muscle, although that contributes to having more muscle. But when you're advanced and you've been working out for a while and you reduce your calories, even if you don't lose muscle, even if you don't lose muscle, just because you have less calories you're probably going to lose some strength. Or if you're like blessed, you're not going to go down in strength, but you're not going to go up in strength. You're going to you know, maintain the same. Now, because of this theory, this is also why I really like to switch up the programming when I transition into a cut or add in an exercise that I'd like never do and try and get good at it. Like we were just recently on a podcast, we were talking about this, right? changing the routine up and so that when you get bored yep. like great time okay i'm going into a cut now i'm going to learn how to do a windmill or learn how to do a turkish get up because you don't have a pr yep you know what I'm saying? you've never done it before so you're going to end up having to reduce and start really really light and so you start off with your 
20 pound kettlebell or whatever that to do your Turkish get up and you're in a cut. And so you can't really tell the difference because you've never done a uh, Turkish get up in a bulk because mm -hmm. you've never been here before. And what you see, because it's a new movement, you're learning every week as you get better at it, you actually increase your strength. And so it's, I like to do this for the the, the the mental piece. Yes, it's like a mental game that I play with myself that I'm like, okay, if I go to bench press, which I've been doing for two decades, I'm I know what a great day of benching looks like and okay, like every, and everything in between, you mm -hmm. know, to a the horrible day of benching. And so if I'm always paying attention to that lift that I've 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 damn near maxed out yeah, my potential. Mess with your head, man. Yeah. I like that advice to you know to seek novelty or something else that's going to stimulate you in a different way so you could try at least to to gain those newbie uh, type of uh, gains and, and and get your muscles to still kind of respond like that because it is really tough. It's really tough when you're when you're cutting calories to 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 have that kind of same drive uh, and performance in, in these lifts. So yeah. you know yeah I think that's great. Advice. This is why I do supersets because. If I do a superset, I have to go lighter anyway. So because I'm already going lighter, then it, I don't necessarily, like Adam said, I don't pay attention so much to the fact that I'm using less weight. Then I kind of get into that mental space of the weight doesn't matter. It's all about the form and technique and I'm dieting. But yeah, your calories make a big difference. I'll tell you what, look, I could go on a cut for two months, lose a lot of body fat, get lean. And then I could have one high calorie day and I will be stronger the next day. Oh, the yeah. very next day, I'll oh, go yeah. up a lot. I actually just did this recently. Mm -hmm. I was doing uh, barbell squats. I've been cutting pretty aggressively. I had to drop my squat rate uh, weight down to, I think I, I dropped down to like 350. And then I had two or three high calorie days, 405. That's a big difference. That's well, a 50 pound difference. One thing I did want to add though, that uh, and this isn't, this isn't a commercial plug for LMNT, but basically being so low in carbohydrates oh, and yeah. then adding in, uh, you know, more sodium has really helped actually to keep a lot of the performance in the gym higher. Dude, so that, so was, that was interesting to me. Sodium is the one of the most underrated, misunderstood nutrients uh, when it comes to athletic performance, especially if you eat low carb, especially if you eat a diet that is low and heavily processed foods. You're probably you will probably benefit from increasing your sodium intake. And you'll notice in the gym right away. Element really highlighted that for me too because I noticed my pumps got way better and same thing, I got stronger and had better performance. Now we're assuming that the, we're answering this all that's related to strength, but it just says progress, right? So also in lifts. Yeah, yeah. Also keep in mind though, progress in lifts could be you better form and technique. Good you know point. So it doesn't. Good point. We always we always think of like you know progressing, yeah, progressing focusing on the different attributes. Yeah, that's also why I like to shift to a whole other exercise so I get away from just always thinking about that. It's not the only way to get better. I mean, mm -hmm. you can get better in, in many different ways, and so. You know, obviously, when you're not fueling the body uh, uh, with the max amount of calories and nutrients, you're not going to perform at your highest mm -hmm. level. That's just that's inevitable. Now, so what a great time to not focus so much on that and focus on something else. Next question is from La La Opri. Will a rowing machine preserve muscle mass while I can't lift? You know what? Okay, I, I forgot to bring this up. I'm glad somebody asked this question. I just got this on my DMs. Did you really? Yes. Okay, so you want to go first? And ask well, I mean, the, so it wasn't pertaining to the rowing machine. It was actually related to like the Stairmaster and, or sprints, I should say. And it was somebody who's in a cut for a show right now. And she was wanting to add more cardio. And what I was trying, and I was like, well, first of all, it's kind of a loaded question you're asking me without knowing like all the details of where your calories and where you're coming from. But you just have to keep in mind that adding more of any cardio of any kind is not advantageous for adding and building or even retaining and holding muscle. So if you're in a caloric deficit and you're leaning out, it doesn't matter what type of cardio you're doing. It's the it's not sending a signal to the body to hang on to muscle. Yeah. So even though, and I know why people think this is because you're moving, you're moving, yeah. and you're it's in, and my muscles are burnt, my my arms get sore from the rower, or my mm -hmm. legs get sto sore from the stairmaster. Yeah, it feels and, more anaerobic. Yeah, so they they feel like it's kind of like strength training. So does that actually help from losing muscle? It's like it doesn't matter where your heart rate is at and the way your body is moving is that's the main signal that's being sent there, and then you're also in a calorie deficit you're telling yeah. the body to pare down now i would say if you did like 15 20 second sprints with a minute rest in between yeah. then that's more like resistance training and more likely to preserve muscle than your traditional steady state you, yeah, know? you get more fast twitch response that way yes. which is a different uh, type of operating mode 
Uh, so that is that is a potential you know option. Also, hit training yes. too uh, with weights is is another viable option that may be a little more muscle preserving. But again, to Adam's point, it's still cardio, so you got to uh, count it for that type of direction. And yeah. it also matters a lot too what's going on with your calorie intake. Oh yeah, that makes a huge difference. So if you are doing something like, and most people that are doing like cardio are in a cut, so you're in a, a reduction of calories. And then you're doing a a cardio based exercise. It's not advantageous for you to have muscle on it. So even if you're doing an, even if you're doing, I mean, lifting weights is about the the, the most ultimate op- ultimate ultimate thing that you can do to preserve. You're muscle. You're gonna combine optimal and <laughs> ultimate. <laughs> it's yeah, the, the ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, though, I like right? It, yeah. I mean, that's so any sort of cardio. Uh, I mean, you're and you're splitting hairs of of comparing rowing to stairmaster to elliptical. Yeah. It's cardio. Now, know? now here's what I was gonna say uh, when we first started with this is I read a study, fascinating study that just highlights how valuable building muscle is with strength training or with resistance training. So in this study, they showed that as little as one ninth of the volume that it took to build muscle will preserve muscle. So in other words, whatever you do to build muscle, Mm -hmm. let's say you're on this training cycle and you gain 10 pounds of lean body mass and you've had the 10 pounds of lean body mass now for a few months, and then you reduce your volume by half you're probably going to keep the muscle with that little volume. Wow. So whatever yeah, it takes to build, cool. whatever it takes to build muscle is not what it takes to keep muscle. No other form of exercise has this particular attribute. It doesn't. This is the beauty of one part of the beauty of strength training or resistance training is that it's more permanent in terms of results. Now nothing is permanent, but I don't know anything that's even this close. I don't you can't do that with like you can't do a bunch of cardio and then cut it down to half the volume yeah. and maintain and have the, same, the same stamina or, or, it's not gonna happen. or the same calorie burn or whatever yeah. with strength training. You do, you, you can cut it way down. And it's funny. I know this. I've been working out for years and years and years and years and keeping my muscle now pff, is way easy. Well, I just talked about this. Yes. I, I was talking about one of the coolest things that I've noticed as I've gotten older is I am the, the amount of volume and frequency that I'm training right now is unbelievably low it's some of the lowest as far as like my overall consistency over the last like let's say two years or so compared to the previous 18 years i'm at the lowest ever but yet my physique de- i mean it doesn't look like what i look like competing okay when i was like yeah. crazy but it definitely is way better than it was at my best at 25 when i was training wild? seven days a week yeah. and sometimes doubled i mean the amount of training i was doing back then so it's it's been really cool to see that after all these years of putting the time under the iron, with the benefits of that, and actually how easy it is to kind of maintain at least a solid base. Yes, I'm not getting on stage being able to compete with the best version of myself, but I can maintain a a fit, muscular physique yeah. with very little. It can training. be reasonable. Yeah, very reasonable. Next question is from He Hannes. What are your thoughts on saunas? Love, love them. Love them. Saunas, you know, there was a study, there was actually several studies that showed that regular sauna use reduced all-cause mortality by a significant percentage. It was like 20% or 25%. It was something like that. Like all-cause mortality just from using a sauna. Something that we don't consider is, you know, obviously your body adapts to your environment. For example, if you're very sedentary, you, li- you never lift anything heavy. You're going to lose lots of muscle, loss of strength because your body, you're not exercising those muscles in a way that, tell- that tells your body, we need this muscle. Okay. Your body's ability to acclimate to temperature, cold and hot, is like a muscle. And if you don't train it, you actually lose this ability because humans, for most of human history, we evolved with radical changes in temperature just in a single day. Like the more it would be hot during the day, cold in the morning, cold at yeah. night. You were forced to adapt to it. Yeah. Now it's like it's always seventy degrees. Always seventy degrees. Am I in my house? No matter what, doesn't matter how hot or yeah, cold it is. Car, everything's regulated. It's always the same, and we lose this ability. And because we've lost that ability, it, we actually have health detriments as a result. So sauna, just like with cold therapy. It's like exercising the body. In fact, you can compare using a sauna 
to the effects of mild exercise. It actually will show that a 20-minute session of sauna is like doing... Well, I remember Max Schmarzo kind of bringing that up as an example, is that it's basically like a very low form of exercise yes. uh, you, that your body's sort of uh, responding to, and it's heating up the core temperature. And then, and, and of course, Dr. Rhonda Patrick talks about this all the time yeah. in terms of heat shock proteins and then you know the cold therapies, the cold mm -hmm. shock proteins. But uh, so there's lots of benefits to it uh, physiologically that uh, you know we we benefit from. I I, st I still attribute this as of all the things we've talked about and experimented with and 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 brought to this podcast over the last six years. Um, and if you go back far enough, you've you've heard me talk about my experience going through the whole hot cold contrast. Mm -hmm. I never trained like this before, and I don't remember. I think it was right when Wim Hof was getting really popular. Mm -hmm. We were all interested in his content, and reading yeah. and listening to his information. And, uh, and I actually went and decided to apply it. Uh, and I was messing with cryotherapy, ice baths, and then the, the sauna and doing this hot, cold contrast. I was doing it in my showers since then. And I've, and I'm, I'm not as consistent as I'd like to be like today, just being completely transparent. Right. Um, although I still do this, I never let like months go by without challenging this where before I went my whole life. Mm -hmm. Like I'd never, I never before the podcast, in my 20s or whatever, intentionally went to a sauna and then a freezing cold I plunge. used to make fun of it. Yeah. When was, people would ask me, what's the benefit of the sauna? Nothing. You just sweat. Don't waste your time. Never did any of that. Uh -huh. yeah. Since then, I, I've i gone on a streak Okay, of of how little I get sick. It Not only do I rarely ever get sick anymore, if I do get sick, it's short-lived. It's not as bad. I used to get sick all the time. And if you guys remember, even when we first started the podcast, I was before yep. I started doing this. After that, it's never been the same for me. So uh, personally, I'm a massive fan of it. Well, they I show use it. it the most. They actually have studies on that. They show people who use saunas regularly uh, suffer from common viral infections like the cold at far lower rates. Mm -hmm. So it's it's got, I mean, proven immune boosting benefits. I, I mean, I'll tell you what, if you had space in your home and you wanted to invest in a few things that would have the biggest bang for the buck that invested in terms of your health, you would have... A barbell, dumbbells, adjustable bench, and a sauna. Yeah. Literally. And that sauna having red light therapy uh, attached to yes. it would be the most ideal. Yeah, yeah, right. Or throw your juve light inside. Yeah, exactly. Throw your juve light inside. Yeah, some form of it. Next question is from Jazz Fitness. What's something within the fitness realm that you recently changed your mind on? Recently? Re you know, I've, there's a lot of things I've changed my mind on in the last... 10 years. Recently, it's hard though, because I think I've been in this for so long that it's hard. And I've, I've been, you know, I've known about things in fitness and health for so long and I've studied them for so long that it's kind of hard to surprise me at this point. I'm not saying that's not going to happen. I guarantee it will. It's just not like it was 10 years ago. 10 years ago, there were lots of things that were kind of blowing me away. I, one comes to mind and that's the benefit of walking. I, I literally used to make fun of this. I, If someone told me, oh, I walk every day, I'd be like, well, that's not exercise. That's a total waste of time. Nothing could be further from the truth. Walking is probably the single best activity you can do to improve your movement. So if you want to increase your movement. So if you want to increase your movement and you think, well, what should I do? There's strength training. That's king. And then what else should I add to it? And I want to improve my longevity. I want to improve my health. Walk. walk. Just walk mm -hmm. several times a day. One of the best things you could do is a 10 minute or 15 minute walk after breakfast, lunch, and dinner, which turns into 30 to 45 minutes of walking a day. That has pays back huge dividends in improvements in health. And that was something that I totally thought was stupid back in the day. I most recent, I mean, like you, I can, there's lots of things over there, our career that I think we've, I've changed my mind on. The probably the most recent was a few years back when. Uh, I did a low carb, no carb type of diet. Um, up until that point in my life, I thought one, uh, that's stupid. Two, it's not for me. Three, I don't think I'll like it at all. Four, I don't think I'll see any benefits from it. Uh, I saw tremendous benefits from it. Uh, I and I, I remember hearing myself on the podcast talking to the guys about thinking it's stupid. I would never do that. I'm eating like 400 to 600 grams of carbs a day. Why would I ever? I love carbs. Why would I want to do that? And at that time too, I was also in really good shape from competing. So it seems ridiculous, uh, but I was like, oh, that's even more reason why I should do this because I feel so staunch about it, right? So I did, and after I did that, it, it has completely changed uh, my eating behaviors. Um, I, I, I don't struggle with cravings as bad as I ever I, I used to because I was such a high carb eater. I was eating a lot of foods that promoted me to want to eat more, which always made it hard to resist things that I probably shouldn't be eating a lot in the diet. 
Um, it wasn't until then. So, I mean, I've openly talked about my sugar addiction and, and candy and ice cream and things like that. It was that was the the pivotal point for me of being able to lock that out and never mm -hmm. have an issue. Like, and I think we recently on the episode not that long ago, you and I were joking around about candy, and I was teasing that you're more likely like you to have candy when we fly now, and you were giving me a hard time. And what about your candy addiction? Like, it's literally since that since I changed my macro profile, I've never struggled with it yeah. again. And up until that point, it was a part of my life, and so. I now eat a much lower carb diet, probably in the 150 to 250 grams a day range for my size is pretty low. Um, and before that, it was two, three times that. So that's something that I completely changed my mind on how I looked at that. And it it changed the way I ate. And I have an easier time getting my protein targets. And I don't crave all these these sugary bad foods like I used to. So that was something I switched switched on. Yeah, this is a tough one. I don't because we've talked about this before in terms of like foam rolling and things like that, uh, where I've shifted my mindset on how to use it properly and the benefits of it. Um, actually, recently, just working with kids and, and kind of getting in that headspace of you know a high school athlete or somebody who has uh, is is very moldable and pliable, like somebody who's like uh, that I could teach something, and I'm just used to teaching. Uh, like your average person and, and how long that takes for them to actually be able to mm -hmm. perform it correctly and have good technique and uh, really get it uh, because there's so many hardwired patterns they've formed over the years that I have to, I have to unwind and, and basically deconstruct in order to then advance forward. And it's actually kind of blowing my mind uh, how quickly like these high school student athletes can can adapt and and, oh, cool. and get the technique of it and so um, it I was very reserved about teaching things like a hang clean or something that's like way more advanced uh, within that within that group and just seeing the the progress day after day and then you know a week later uh, just started to go with the broomstick and then kind of worked our way to to the bar. And it's, it, it actually like, it really blew my mind. Like some of these kids that were able to pick it up and, and get all those really, um, it, crazy complicated cues and, and be able to apply it right away. Dude, they're, they're so lucky to, to have you. That's so awesome. Cause I, I, I bet they're going to progress. I mean, at that age, especially with that kind of motivation, yeah. they're going to progress. I was literally going to hold it out till like next year. I'm like, we got to just do squats and bench, you know, like we got to get this down. And uh, and they just they literally like just blew my mind. I that's, was like, oh, okay, you guys are getting this, awesome. so we I can got, build off this. I got something that was recent for me: the muscle building benefits of pushing a sled. I always considered sled drives to be like more cardio, cardio, more function, more power. It's good for athletes, but really no bodybuilding uh, applications. Like it's not going to build my legs or my quads or my glutes or anything like that. Oh no, it's a great bodybuilding uh, exercise. Great for building the legs. I do them once a week now. It's a staple part of my routine. And I remember doing them after the second time I did them, I saw the difference in my quads and then my calves also. It's like my calves never want to grow. All of a sudden I see them responding. Oh, it's because I'm driving a really heavy sled, you know, for, for you know 30 yards or whatever. So that's something that I recently changed my mind on. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com. We've got free stuff for you. New stuff is on there all the time. Head over to mindpumpfree.com. Go check it out. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Well, what's necessarily wrong with more money? Isn't money okay? Like if someone gave me $10,000, that would be a good thing. Like explain the difference between money connected to goods and services and money just not connected to anything, just more of it existing, but not connected to those goods and services.